Previously, we learned about how we could create modules in Rust. And in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the modules and about libraries in Rust. First of all, I want to talk about a little detail which I excluded in the previous video. And that is that there's actually another way to define a module in Rust. Because previously I showed you that you had to create a bank.rs file and a bank directory that contained the functionality. And the reason I showed you this approach is because that's what was mentioned in the Rust documentation. And all of the lessons that I'm creating in this series are based on the Rust documentation. And whether that's the best practice or not, that's what I'm following for now. Anyway, what I wanted to show you is that you can actually group all the functionality directly in the folder without having to create a separate file such as bank.rs. So here what we're going to do is rename bank.rs to mod.rs. And immediately in our main.rs file, we're going to get an error because it cannot find this module anymore, which makes sense because we do not have it defined anywhere. We just have a directory that has some functionality, but our public API does not exist under the name of bank. To make this work, we're going to have to drag it inside the bank directory. And this file follows a special naming convention, which Rust recognizes as the module entry point. So this is just another way to create a module in Rust, and it works exactly the same way as when we had bank.rs defined. Rust will look for this mod.rs file inside the bank directory, and when it finds it, it will allow us to use all of this functionality, as long as we define it to be public, of course. And it's completely up to you whether you want to define a mod.rs file or move that outside and rename it to bank.rs. Both of these approaches work. Up next, we're going to create our very first library in Rust. So what we're going to do first is remove this by deleting it and deleting bank.rs. And we're going to reset our main.rs file. So it's not going to contain anything. Now inside the source, we're going to create a new file called lib.rs. And we're going to try to create another banking system here. So this will be the top level module, which we will name banking. The whole reason we're using a library is so that we can group related functionality together to be used elsewhere. Just like when we use that rand crate that allows us to use special functionality for random number generation. Anyway, to get started, let's create our very first module, which will be the banking module. So this will be the start of our library. And once again, we need to make this public so that other files can see it. We are exposing this functionality to the rest of the world. Right below that, we're going to create a public module called accounts. And inside here, I'm going to insert a public struct called account, which contains a public account number and a public balance. Right below that, we're going to create a public function called open account. And this will be a constructor used to create a new account struct. Then right below that, we're going to create a function called close account, which will be used to close any account. And this will be a private function, as you can see, we do not use the public keyword here, which means we cannot use it outside of this module. And I had to annotate it with allow dead code because we're not going to be using it in this project. I just put it here to simulate that we can have some private functionality in case we need to use it. This is not something you want the user to see because it performs quite a dangerous operation, such as account closure. That's something we want to make sure we handle appropriately. Now, right below the accounts module, it's time we create another module. And this one will be called transactions. And since we want to work with the accounts module, we're going to use some special syntax to refer to it. So here I'm going to type in use super accounts and account. What super allows us to do is to refer to functionality that's defined outside of transactions, one level up. So outside of this block, the next level is going to be the level that contains public module accounts. So that's what super allows us to do. And I'll explain it in more detail in a different video. But inside here, we're going to create a function that's called deposit, which allows us to deposit a given amount into an account of our choice. So here we take an account and the amount that we want to insert. Then we add to that account and we print a message with the changes. And right below that, we're going to create a function that allows us to withdraw money. So I'm just going to paste that in and explain it real quick. So here we insert the account we want to withdraw from and the amount that we want to try to withdraw. Of course, we should check that that account has that money before we try to do so. And if it does, we withdraw that money. 
Otherwise, we're going to print a beautiful message that tells them that they are too poor and that they cannot withdraw the amount that they wish to withdraw. And finally, let's create one more function that allows us to transfer funds from one account to another. And this function will be called transfer, which takes an account to transfer money from and an account to transfer money to, plus the amount to transfer. And once again, we need to check that the user or the account has a valid balance before we try to move the money. And if it does, we can perform that operation. Otherwise, we tell the user or the account holder once again that they are just too poor to perform that transaction. And Rust is complaining because I did not close this properly. There we go. And right now, I'm writing all of the functionality inside the library. But if you have separate files, you'd use lib.rs as the entry point to expose all the functionality that you want to be visible to the project. Now that we've finished writing the library, we can go to our main.rs file and try to use it. To use this library, we need to refer to our project name. So here, in this example, we need to type in use main because my project is named main. That is the folder for my project that contains the source and the cargo.toml. As you can see inside here, we have a package with the name of main. And that's why I refer to main here. If this was named something else, you would use that name instead. Anyway, use main banking. And from banking, I want to import accounts and transactions. And now we can use the functionality that we defined in lib.rs. So to get started, I'm going to create two accounts, one for James and one for Bob. And the very first thing we're going to do is see what they contain. So I'm going to debug James and debug Bob. And when we run this, what we should get as an output are these two accounts, one that belongs to James and one that belongs to Bob. Both of them have a balance of zero. Next, we can perform some simple transactions such as depositing $200 into James' account and then withdrawing $50 from James' account. And since James is a boss and has some money, he can now pay Bob the money that he owed. So he's going to pay Bob $100. And the next time we debug both of these accounts, we're going to see the amount that they end up with. So right now, if we were to run this, what we should get as an output is that we opened two accounts and as you can see, the balance started at zero for both of them. And then we deposited $200 into account one, which belongs to James. So the new balance is $200. After that, we withdrew $50 from account one, which still belongs to James. So the new balance is now $150. Then we transferred $100 from account one to account two. So James now only has $50 while Bob has 100. And we were able to do all of that through our library our banking library, which contains all the functionality or exposes all the functionality that we can use for banking. 